in the descriptions are the factors for awakening. Mindfulness comes first. And usually it's defined as being mindful of the body in and of itself, feelings, mind, mental qualities. In other words, the four establishings of mindfulness, ardent, alert, and mindful, putting aside greed and distress with reference to the world. The practice leading up to right concentration. Then in that context, the next factor. Analysis of qualities it means looking at what's going on in your mind as you try to get the mind to settle down. Which events in the mind are going to be helpful to settling down and which ones are not. Then comes persistence. You try to develop the skillful qualities and abandon the unskillful ones. Then following that, the factors deal with concentration directly. Rapture, calm, concentration, equanimity. But there's another description in which mindfulness is being mindful of the dhammas that you have memorized, that you've learned, what you've read, what you've listened to. And then the analysis of dhammas has to do with sorting through what you listen to, to figure out what's skillful and what's not, what can be applied right now and what's not useful right now. The two meanings are not all that different, because after all, when you're being mindful to be with the body, ardent, alert, mindful, putting aside greed and distress with reference to the world. You have to remember what you've learned that's really relevant to what you're doing right now. The sense of mindfulness is being able to memorize a lot of the Dharma. Do you remember that back in the beginning, they didn't write the Dharma down. People learned the Dharma by listening to it and memorizing it. And there was a very systematic way of memorizing long passages of Dharma. We've lost that ability now. Our memories get shorter and shorter because we get more and more dependent on other things to keep things in mind for us, which is sad, because those things are not, not going to be with us all the time. We have to learn how to internalize things, internalize our ability to call on the Dharma when we need it. And then image the Buddha gives of the practice as being like having a fortress at the frontier. Mindfulness is the gatekeeper. In other words, states of mind present themselves, and then mindfulness has to rifle through his memory. And we go, who are these people coming here? Do I know them? Do I not know them? Are they friends? Are they foes? The more extensive a memory the gatekeeper has, the more he's able to recognize who he can let in and who he should keep out. Then you get inside the fortress. You've got the soldiers of right effort, and their weapons are their learning, the teachings they've memorized. This is why we have chants, this is why we memorize passages of the Dharma, so we can have some weapons. Because things come up in the mind, and the question is what to do. This is a very basic level of inner conversation or inner dialogue. What to do next? What to do next? And different imperatives will recommend themselves. And the question is, where do you get those imperatives? They come from our family, they come from the media. Things we picked up here and there, the geography of Middle Earth. Our minds are full of all kinds of things. The question is, are they useful weapons or not? Think of that Far Side cartoon, the cow tools. This cow is standing behind a table with some tools on the table that the cow is very proud about. And you look at the tools, and they look totally useless. 
Well, you can't imagine how even a cow would be able to use anything like that. And there's no idea of what they would be actually useful for. And so much of our inner storehouse here it has lots and lots of trash. And sometimes the weapons are, if they are weapons inside, they're weapons that we turn on ourselves. The lessons we've learned from modern psychotherapy, the lessons we've learned from the media. Who knows where we get all these things. So it's good to memorize the drama so you have some actual weapons that you can use against your defilements as they try to get in through the gate or try to climb over the walls. You want to be able to recognize these things before they invade the mind, because often when they invade the mind, then they remain. So take some time to memorize some drama. Learn the chants, so you're not having to look at the book all the time. Because when they're memorized, at least they'll be sloshing around in the mind someplace. When your mindfulness is good, they're lined up right there, right at hand. Now, there's a possibility as you get older, your mindfulness begins to get a little bit blurry. But still, you have some good things in there. They'll come popping up. So take some time. Do your chanting not only while we're here as a group, but when you're off alone, go through your chants. Equip the mind with good weapons. So when greed comes, you can shoot it down. When anger comes, you can shoot it down. You recognize these things as enemies. That's part of the training. And then you remember what to do with them. These are things to be abandoned. And that knowledge will help you. When there's another part of the mind that says, oh, greed, let it in. Lust, let it in. Anger, jealousy, let these things in. They've been in the mind for so long. Think of a John Cha's image of the house that has one chair. Well, they've taken over the chair, and you're standing off by the side serving them. What you want is to get them out of the chair. You sit in the chair and don't let anybody else sit in the chair and have your weapons by you. So if anyone tries to take the chair from you, you can recognize them as either skillful or not. And if they're unskillful, you can shoot them down. Some people ask why we should learn the Pali. We learn the Pali and you look at the English. But the Pali has a nice rhythm. It gets into your body, it gets into your blood, it gets into your breath. And as you've learned to associate that with the Dharma, then sometimes even if you can't remember the meaning of the words, the rhythms that you build in to your body through memorization will at the very least call the Dharma to mind. So it will be there when you need it. You may not be able to remember the meaning of a specific passage, but just remembering there is the Dharma in the world. You've practiced the Dharma in the past. Remembering that fact can often help you call useful things to mind. There's a passage in the canon that talks about how people who have memorized the Dharma die. And if it so happens, they get reborn in heaven. For a while they get kind of careless, heedless, because the pleasures in heaven are pretty good. But then the Dharma comes to the surface, and they remember, oh, there is such a thing as the Dharma. And you remember what the teachings were. That helps to make you heedful. So even in heaven you need weapons, to say nothing of being here on earth. So make sure you stock yourself with good weapons and not just cow tools, or weapons that turn on the owner. You want weapons that can shoot down the defilements.
And in this way, the conversation that goes on in your mind is actually a help to you and not a hindrance. <laughs>